We can utilize ACLs to secure access to the infrastructure as well. I want you to picture your infrastructure right now. What do you have? Well, you have a router connected up to the internet probably. Maybe you have a data center and you have all these different sections of your infrastructure. Well, you want to protect those different areas because those different areas, those different sections are going to provide different services and features and resources to the users within the organization. However, not everybody needs access to those servers or those resources. Not everybody needs access to and from the internet. So you can use the access control list in order to uh, secure those different uh, components of your overall infrastructure. So you might have routers set up, you might have adaptive security appliances set up, firewalls, and they're going to use access control lists in order to control the flow of traffic in and out of specific router interfaces. So for example, if you're looking at this particular router up here, that is connecting up to, let's say, uh, the internet. It's at the edge of the network. We want to uh, provide connectivity out to the internet, but we want to deny connectivity in from the internet if the traffic sourced from the internet and it doesn't happen to be return traffic due to some user's request from inside of our organization. So a, a web request that goes out from inside the organization has to get back through, but the uh, traffic that's generated on the internet that is not a web request, uh, that is not in response to something generated inside of our network, we want to we want to stop that in its tracks right at the edge of the network. So we can set up these infrastructure access control lists at these different parts of the network in order to control that flow of traffic. So they give us an example here of an infrastructure access control list. And in this case, it's an extended access control list called access control list infrastructure in. And it's being applied to gigabit ethernet zero slash zero with the IP access group command followed by the name of the access control list and it's applied inbound. So it's traffic coming inbound. And this particular infrastructure access control list is being set up on an edge router that's connecting up to the internet. And the first few entries they have are about denying IP fragments. Why are they trying to deny these IP fragments? Well, here's what malicious users uh, tend to do to circumvent our intrusion prevention systems or our intrusion detection systems. What they'll do is they will excessively fragment uh, their packets. And they excessively fragment these packets because when they fragment them, they're making these smaller packets which really have no meaning to them. Right? As a whole, it's a malicious payload. It's designed to do harm to the infrastructure, to end stations maybe, to routers. But when it's broken up into smaller parts, it's just, it's just normal, normal traffic. Because we can't analyze, that intrusion prevention system or detection system can't analyze it as malicious traffic. Because it's not recognizable as malicious traffic. So what we can do at the edge of the network is we can deny these fragments, these smaller, broken up, fragmented, excessively fragmented packets to ensure that the malicious user can't use that as a way to circumvent the intrusion prevention systems in our organization. Therefore, we can stop their malicious payload before it gets any further into our infrastructure. In this case, we're dealing with a internet-facing router running border gateway protocol. And since we're running border gateway protocol, if we're denying packets inbound on the interface, we are going to have to permit, we're going to have to permit the BGP uh, protocols. We're going to have to permit the BGP port numbers. So what protocol does BGP use? It uses TCP utilizing port 179. So we have to make sure that we're able to successfully establish our BGP neighbor adjacency uh, out of this particular router interface, even though we're trying to deny all of their traffic. So this particular permit statement here is going to make sure that if we are the BGP client, we can... Uh, form that neighborship with the BGP server. So the other device would be using port 179 and we'd be using an ephemeral port. Uh, but in reverse, if we were the BGP server, we would be listening or using port 179 and then the other station on the other end would be classified as the client. So as you can see, both these access control list entries um, are needed here because 
with BGP unless you specifically identify, oh, this is going to be the device using port 179 all the time. And this device over here will be using uh, an ephemeral port. Unless you manually set that and specify it, you really don't know which one's going to be the server and the client. So we've got both covered here to make sure that if they're the server, hey, we can be the client. If we're the server, they can be the client. We will successfully form our BGP neighbor adjacencies. In this case, we are now looking at an entry for SSH. So SSH is being permitted inbound. So uh, remote stations outside of the organizations that are uh, potentially either one station or a station that's part of a group of stations, a allowable IP range of uh, devices that can town that in, we can see that uh, listed here. They're going to be permitted. Think of a remote office. All, all your management, uh, all your um, administrators are at headquarters. They're not in the remote office. They're in headquarters, and they need to successfully connect to a router or a switch. Where? In the remote office. Well, this would be an example of allowing them in. Is Telnet allowed in? Nope. But SSH is allowed in. So we can control that coming in. And down here, SNMP. Again, the SNMP server, that the management server might be in headquarters while we're trying to manage devices elsewhere in a branch office. Well, we'd have to allow that SNMP traffic to come in. But we want to take it a step further and make sure that we secure SNMP so that way there we're only giving out our SNMP information to legitimate network management stations. We want to be giving it out to a rogue network management station that has managed to circumvent other security uh, features that we have put in place. Pinging. Again, for management purposes, if you're thinking about remote offices connecting over the internet and we want to ping for testing connectivity, we can permit ICMP uh, in the uh, interface connected up to the internet, but we only want to allow it from certain devices, from certain stations not from everybody, because we don't want somebody on the internet to just start generating a whole bunch of pings and excessively pinging devices inside of our organization, trying to produce some type of denial of service attack or maybe some type of sweep as they are doing reconnaissance. Here they are using a deny statement to deny all other IP traffic uh, to any network device, so deny IP any. You could also specify a particular IP address range if you want to instead of any, any meaning everybody, but if you had a particular address space that you wanted to deny, uh, from being able to connect into your infrastructure, then you can deny that here. And then if you want to permit other type of transit traffic coming in and out of the interface, you can do a permit IP any any at the end. So this will catch everything that doesn't um, get caught by any of the other entries that we have in this particular access control. It's called ACL infrastructure in. And then as we already discussed, it's being applied to gigabit ethernet zero slash zero with the IP access group command. So Again, as I mentioned before, this is just some examples of what you can do for an infrastructure access controllers, but you specifically would have to sit down and, and ultimately determine what protocols, what services do we need to allow in and out of these particular interfaces at these particular portions of our network while denying everything else. You have to write it down. You have to analyze it. You have to test it before you even consider deploying it because we are dealing with security here and security is not something that you just copy and paste from somewhere and put it somewhere else. So take your time, make sure you get it right because uh, you don't want to open up holes uh, in your infrastructure. You want to close those holes and you want to protect your network.